where I left off when we were last speaking about Trump and the uh, request by some to uh, bring the intelligence agencies in um, because of uh, Russian meddling and uh, Russian connections. Uh, this is really hard for me to swallow. Um, when I was five years old or so, um, I went to kindergarten in Poland because my father's a historian. He went there to do his dissertation. And um, I found Poznań, Poland uh, to be a paradise compared to where he went to the university at University of Chicago. I lived in near Hyde Park and I was uh, beaten up regularly. Um, it was a rough place. The advantage was when I got to California, nobody could beat me up at all um, for quite a while. Um, but uh, so the idea that communism is evil and capitalism is great was hard for me to swallow as a little kid. It didn't even, wasn't really even in there, but as time progressed and I heard these things, I had seen a, a beautiful place, Poznan. Uh, sleigh rides in the winter. Uh, they had something like a Halloween where I dressed up as a Cossack. Uh, very fond memories. Um, always uh, celebrating coal miners. Um, arguing with my teacher uh, that I preferred Napoleon to Lenin, uh, which actually I didn't realize uh, was actually probably a very strong Polish impulse. Um, so, <clears throat> so I don't buy a lot of this stuff, uh, and I have my reasons. And um, uh, so we have to look at what happened with Russia. Um, so what happened was in the late '80s, um, the Soviet Union made a deal to allow Germany to reunify, and the plan was that uh, NATO would not expand into their um, former satellites, uh, East Germany, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Yugoslavia, which was a socialist country that was uh, neutral. It was just as uh, aligned to China as it was to Russia. It was not under the Russian uh, boot, so to speak, the Soviet boot. Uh, Albania, another Chinese-affiliated uh, place. And, uh, and so then, uh, apparently, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush basically honored this. Uh, George Bush won. Uh, and then when Clinton came in, uh, they started pushing NATO towards the Russian border. So, you know, it's really incredible when you watch Hillary Clinton at the uh, Democratic Convention. I really recommend you look at her face when she's talking about standing with our allies and challenging Russia. It's a, it was a face of somebody who definitely would consider... Uh, kinetic actions uh, with a, a nuclear power and this was a uh, uh, and, and this brings us you know with George Orwell we had thought crime we had sex crime well in Clinton's case we had sex war um, so it seems that uh, once he started bombing Yugoslavia um, the neocons of that age the conservatives the hawks um, sort of laid off on him. I, I could be mistaken, but he was beaten into line and initiated in a war, which at the time we all thought was great, as all the wars uh, at the time, all we have to do is read the newspaper and watch the television, so how do we know that these wars are not what they're cracked up to be? And it wasn't. Uh, the, uh, the liberation of Kosovo uh, was not the liberation of Kosovo. It was the destruction of a socialist country. Um, and of course it's more complex than that but that's an aspect <clears throat> um, so then uh, what happened was there was this uh, from 92 until 2000 you had the Yeltsin period uh, where the country was just run into the ground they had terrible poverty terrible depression vastly worse than our 1930s depression uh, they tried to figure out how what to do with all the state companies um, so they gave shares out to everyone in the local state companies, and those shares were rapidly acquired by the oligarchs uh, for pennies on the dollar. Uh, so rapidly, the people were separated from their shares in the state industries, given uh, nothing for it, driven into poverty. The whole country was carted off by a few oligarchs. <clears throat> and in 96, it looked very likely that the communists would come to power come back to power in an election, be elected. They were vastly more popular than Yeltsin, and it was our intelligence agencies that made sure the communists didn't come into power. This is a lot bigger deal than um, if uh, uh, Putin had somehow magically gotten us to vote for Trump, which is, of course, absurd. There's a hundred factors that could 
describe how uh, Trump uh, edged out Clinton. And the primary one is her not picking a progressive to be her vice president, which took all the energy out of the campaign. And, you, you know, there's a hundred other reasons as well. And there were plenty of leaks about their corruption uh, or whatever you want to call it with the Clinton Foundation um, that had nothing to do with hacks. It had to do with uh, uh, materials that got out through clearly non-Russian means. But in 96, we basically put a guy who had a 2 or 3% approval rating, not like Trump with 35 or 40 or whatnot, uh, but it, literally a guy in the toilet, and we were able to turn that around to get Yeltsin back in to drive this country into total economic collapse. As every, and, and he uh, liquidated the entire Soviet Union. Uh, it lost half of its useful territory, and most of it, a lot of it, is historically Russia. A lot of Ukraine, about two thirds of the Ukraine, uh, is historically Russian lands. Um, there really never was a Ukraine specifically. There is a Ukraine ethnic group. I'm not against the Ukrainians uh, having a state, but the, the country has a river that runs down it, the Dnieper River, river. And the Dnieper on the west side are the Ukrainians who are uh, Catholic. And on the east side, the Dnieper are the uh, Russian uh, uh, Ukrainians. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they're traditionally Russian Orthodox. So all of, uh, you know, Crimea was totally Russian and uh, was handed over to uh, the Ukraine by Khrushchev uh, randomly and illegally. The Soviet Union was technically disbanded uh, illegally. Um, so uh, Putin comes along in 2000, and if you go and pull some economic charts, you'll see that from 2000 to 2008, the Russian economy uh, recovered. And that is why the Russians uh, are supportive of Putin. Uh, and in fact, it continued to progress until 2012. And at this point, the Saudis, along with the U.S., tanked the prices of oil. Because who gets hurt? Venezuela, uh, opponent of the uh, U.S. Uh, foreign policy establishment, Iran, uh, Russia. So take the money away from our enemies. Uh, it's a perfectly good idea if you don't mind imposing mass suffering on populations. Uh, so, uh, but nonetheless, from 2012 to 2016, Russia's economy did not collapse. <clears throat> so, here's a guy thumbing his, uh, you know, poking us in the eye, um, you know, and financing Russia Today, which had uh, a lot of our own uh, journalists on it, like Christopher, he Chris Hedges, Tom Hartman, uh, a lot of good people. So he put a venue in. Uh, that really annoyed people because it allowed an alternate point of view to come out that was with high production values. What I'm doing here does not have high production values. I have a camera that I'm recording and I will get less audience as a result. Um, but uh, I hope that a few of the people that uh, see my content are actually people that end up contributing ultimately. And I'm sure that's happened, that the content that I've worked on that was original ended up getting into bigger productions. So uh, I don't need the credit, I just need to be part of the movement. So uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't buy into this uh, uh, Russia hysteria at all. Um, and I don't see it as a problem that uh, Trump wants to have good relations with Russia. I don't see it a problem that Flynn didn't tell Pence that sanctions came up in his conversation. Um, I don't, uh, I, I work in a business and sometimes I don't disclose every little aspect of every conversation to my colleagues or necessarily even my superior. Um, since no decision was taken, um, there's also what's called plausible deniability, which is that sometimes you don't want to give your bosses information in politics that could end up making them have to get in the hot seat, meaning perjure themselves, or, uh, uh, I mean, you've seen the kind of gotcha questions that are asked. So, uh, so what we're seeing is the taking out of all the anti-establishment people in the Trump administration. Maybe these guys should be taken out, maybe they shouldn't, but you end up getting a ideological purification into the Washington consensus. So who ends up surviving? Um, the, the, the insiders and who ends up getting axed? The outsiders. You know, so some of the outsiders should be axed, like uh, probably this uh, Betsy DeVos. I don't know her well. Her brother's Eric Prince, uh, head of Blackwater, 
and uh, that's a war crime operation if I've ever seen one, but she's not her brother. Um, uh, so there's some of these people that a lot of my friends really don't want to see get in government, or the, uh, this guy Posner, P Pudzer, uh, the uh, CEO of Carl's Jr. But what uh, people did not vote for Trump to get a bunch of insiders. Um, and um, so you've got Flynn, who is being, uh, uh, who has been has fallen. And now think about what happened to him. So if you were a politician later, um, and you were going up against the system, uh, the NSA just pulls out your file, finds the most embarrassing thing in it. Obviously, ideally with a foreign national, because then it isn't illegal wiretapping. They can admit they wiretapped you. Um, but they don't have to stop there. They can uh, pull the files of the domestic calls because uh, I've heard people describe the fact that they had access to all the calls every time of everyone, uh, uh, you know, uh, let this slip. I've heard law enforcement people let this slip. So it seems to me that it's all being taken, um, which means that we all can be blackmailed. Um, uh, so uh, this is a, uh, not something we should tolerate. Uh, that uh, that Flynn had to resign. Um, and the thing I liked about Flynn was that he, although he was, from my point of view, horrendously ignorant about the history of Islam and Arab culture, he seemed teachable. He seemed like a person who you could have a conversation with. He didn't seem so arrogant that he couldn't hear anything. I know progressives, and you can't, uh, which is where I'm largely orientated, uh, who you can't tell a damn thing to um, because they think they know it all already and then imagine the Washington types I know people who are the families of politicians and they get so angry they just shut off it's like you're not there when you tell them something outside of their thought bubble so um, this is very dangerous and how it relates to Chile is uh, what I've seen here what, we, what they need here is to discover, rediscover their suppressed history um, and take pride in being indigenous people. And it is happening. The Mapuche in the south um, are reviving their language. Uh, they're struggling for autonomy. And what's happening, the government has used terrorist laws against Native Americans here in Chile. Um, and up in the north, there's a, uh, there was an uh, ethnic group called the Diagita people. And everywhere you go, you see the Diagita hostel, the Diagita this, the Diagita that. Uh, so people are very proud of rediscovering their ancestry. And, w and if that happens, the hold of this sort of commercial uh, white Pepsi Coke culture um, will get weakened. Um, and that brings me to the idea of right and left. So, is war a right-wing phenomena or a left-wing phenomena? So what you see is that basically the, the working people in the middle class who orientate towards Trump view the system as left-wing, which is, to a left-winger, inconceivable that you could call the uh, mainstream media owned by billionaires, Carlos Slim, uh, you know, running the New York Times, Jeff Bezos uh, running the Washington Post, Comcast running NBC. These are left-wingers. That's what they hear on Fox News. Um, this is absurd. Um, so is, uh, so are wars, illegal wars, uh, right-wing or left-wing? Illegal wars or immoral wars can be conducted by go governments that identify themselves as left, center, or right. What about corruption? Is corruption left-wing or right-wing? Well, you can have plenty of corruption in a left-wing government, and you can have plenty of corruption in a right-wing government. Um, so this whole right-left thing needs to be um, dismantled uh, because um, it's really about the people versus the powerful. And, if, and, and the powerful have got, are developing you know, computerization, artificial intelligence, uh, surveillance, uh, robotic warfare. If they want to kill you, I don't want you to get paranoid, but um, you know, they have the technology to kill you without anyone ever figuring out how you were killed, obviously, with uh, certain types of drugs. Um, 
or uh, and you know usually they can just discredit people and destroy their reputations by leaking information so what we're seeing is it's like being back in the old Soviet Union which is not what Russia is today uh, under Stalin which is you have to read between the lines uh, and we thought for a while when we read our newspapers that we had enough of a diversity of uh, news that we weren't reading between the lines, we were reading the lines. Um, so we have to get beyond right and left, and this has been a big struggle for me in the Bernie uh, movement, is I've got some people, uh, you know, that uh, get so upset about uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, Ron Paul or Justin uh, Amash or uh, Alex Jones, who, Alex Jones is obviously, uh, let's be charitable and say he's two-thirds entertainer, uh, and his entertainment is fear. Um, so, um, but um, I confess, I do listen to Alex Jones at times, and some of the, he did a great show about Libya, really exposing how horrible it was what we did to that country. Um, and um, so he, he had, and he has an enormous audience, so it's, it's hard to uh, just rule him out. Um, so obviously, if I post Alex Jones uh, uh, on a uh, on a Bernie site, I'm going to uh, have my hat handed to me. Uh, so there's all of these uh, third rails that makes it impossible to discuss anything. Um, I and hopefully people get beyond this, but we have to get beyond right and left. And uh, let's see here. I think that's pretty much it. So where it all goes for me is. If you have a globalized international capital, you have to have a globalized international people's movement. Um, and that movement needs to be non-sectarian. It can't be like a religion. It has to be universal. Uh, so it could be an international people's party of parties. So in some countries, there are too many parties. So they could consolidate uh, four or five of the small parties under one banner but still within that organization have four or five wings. Uh, uh, so essentially parties within a party. And in the US you could essentially do the same thing. You could have the Green Party, the Democratic Party, the Libertarian Party, all being as wings in a highly democratic, dynamic, direct democracy oriented structure. Um, so what are the international parties that are out there today? Well you have the uh, Socialist International, which is probably going to just scare people in the U.S. 